Hey, what's up everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. Anyway, what do we have in this twerky little party box? Well, it's the Bridge Pro Plus for the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros. Bridge has been making iPad keyboard cases for a while, but just recently shipped out their Plus version, which means it has a trackpad. So let's dig in. Uh, the box seems really nice. It has this magnetic latch here. Um, no scissors or frustration. You get a rundown of your specialized keys. You got a bunch of them and your intelligent trackpad. Looking into the box, you see immediately the keyboard staring at you. No protection. I mean, we just met. The finish looks very similar to the iPad Pro on purpose. We have a charging port on this side. And on the back, you can see we have little friction nubs. Next, we have the magnetic cover that goes on the back of the iPad with the bridge logo on it. More goodies in the box. We get a sticker and we get documentation. Fun reading. Last but not least, we get a USB-C, USB... We get a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. So I got a 2018 11-inch iPad Pro right here. Let's put it all together. Let's take this, get the notches facing up. Make sure your camera's facing up, I think, and then you wanna just slide it in here and push it down. And it's uh, pretty sturdy. Let's put the finishing touch on it. Doesn't really snap into place, but uh, it's okay. There you have it, your magnetic cover. It's all there. Profile, close. And last but not least, 180 degrees. So I'm gonna spend a little time with this keyboard to get to know it. Then let's compare it to the gold standard, the Apple Magic Keyboard. If you don't think this is a fight, you are living under a rock. Quick PSA, skip to these times to learn how to pair the bridge to the iPad and update its firmware, which I highly recommend, just there if you need it. So this is what I think. When reviewing any iPad keyboard, the most educational thing I can do for you is compare it to the default best experience out there. Apple's Magic Keyboard. Obviously, Apple kind of has an unfair advantage both in terms of resources and with its full control over the iPad. How well can a third-party keyboard compete now that the trackpad is in the mix? I guess we'll find out. As you can see, I'm not comparing the same size iPad, so I will refrain from making any judgments about spaciousness. Put up the scoreboard, let's do this. We got three rounds. Number one, design and build. Two, keyboard. Three, trackpad. Here are the timestamps because I play a good person on the internet. Right away, you recognize the bridge is a wannabe laptop. Maybe you like this, maybe you don't. But what this does mean is that the bridge base feels sturdy, more like a MacBook Pro than a Smartfolio. It's bendy. The Magic Keyboard base is stiffer than the Smartfolios for sure. But you still get the sense that it's fragile, like it could snap if, let's say, some extremely young person jumped on it while it's on the couch. Bridge score is the first point. Both work well on a desk. May be hard to see, but the bridge does have a little bit of an incline because of these little nubbies down here. Maybe you like the incline. Incline. <laughs> Maybe you like the incline. I'm giving both a point. The bridge, however, is really not comfortable in your lap because it's not flat. These same little nubbies that give your laptop an incline stick out and dig into your lap. It's not pleasant. It's kind of a bummer. Plus one for the Magic Keyboard. The bridge looks like a generic laptop. The Magic Keyboard has the wow factor. The floating is just kind of stunning, just on a visual level. One point for Apple just for looking cool. The bridge's, magne the bridge's, the bridge's magnetic cover simply doesn't have a proper fit. It doesn't snap into place with authority, and it's uneven, at least what was shipped to me. I measured the difference in height on the two sides and found the camera bump side was about 1% taller leaving the edge and corner on the other side exposed and unprotected. Very poor precision, the magnet is weak and the cover easily shifts around and falls off. At best, this cover gets like a D minus F plus. Wish I could tell you that is better for the 2020 iPad Pros. I really don't know, at least not yet. In contrast, the Magic Keyboard's magnetic cover works aggressively well with a hard snap that can hold weight. I more or less see the bridge cover as a defect, so minus one for the bridge, 
plus one for the partially eaten fruit. The bridge needs to be charged. This is a chore and means it may possibly leave you SOL if you're not near a power source or you don't have a handy USB-C cable. Bridge says you get asterisk three months of use out of a charge. I obviously haven't had it long enough to test that, but I doubt it's three months. It also does not support pass-through charging. This means you may have to resort to this nightmare scenario just to keep it running. Not having to charge the Magic Keyboard and pass-through charging is awesome. So giving Tim's employer two points here. The palm rest edge angle is more severe on the bridge, not to mention the bridge is metal, and the Magic Keyboard is rubbery. Both of these devices have a short lip, much shorter than let's say a MacBook Pro, so many of you will have your palms resting right on the edge of the lip. To make things worse for a bridge, it's quite a bit higher, which means there will be more pressure on your palm as your palm may be suspended in air on the edge of a bridge. Hmm, it's really deep. How do you lose the Apple on comfort? Apple released this mouse specifically to cut off customers' fingers. Very choppy. Plus one for the Jolly Rancher's best flavor. Bridges are not as heavy as Magic Keyboards. Don't want to list out all the weights, but just know if you get a Magic Keyboard, your bundle, which is a keyboard and iPad, will be about 8% heavier for the 11 inch and 12% heavier for the 12.9 inch. Lighter's better, plus one for the bridge. Interesting fact, the bridge is less likely to tip over as it's more bottom heavy. Lots of materials are shoved into the Magic Keyboard's top cover. As you can see from this angle, the bridge falls back on its base while the Magic Keyboard... Well, let's just hope it's wearing underwear. Plus one for the bridge. The bridge can open to 180 degrees, so lots of tilt freedom for the user. Big win for the bridge. I'll give it two points. The bridge makes it somewhat difficult to interact with the home bar due to the iPad being kind of tucked low behind the keyboard here. This is obviously a problem, but I'll explain later why it's maybe a bigger problem than you might think. The floating design really shines here, plus one for the fruit that isn't as good as a pear. This is not necessarily obvious, but with the bridge, you can't interact with the touchscreen without significantly repositioning your hands. Oh. The keyboard to screen transition is a big positive coming out of this floating design. With the traditional hinge, the screen feels much more remote, like it's not meant to be touched, which mostly laptop screens have not been designed to be touched. So copying the design aesthetic of a laptop is perhaps not that inspired for complementing an iPad. Plus one for Mr. Magic. Both cases fail at providing an official tablet mode, so neither collapse on themselves like the smart folio here. Tableting. However, it is much harder to place and remove the iPad with the bridge. Let me, let me try it. Yeah! Jeez, chopped off my finger. And here's the Magic Keyboard. Plus one for the A team. What's nice about both of these keyboards is being able to just slap them shut and opening them without a lot of hassle. With the old folios, you need to fiddle with it to make it stand up. And with many third-party cases, you have to pull out a kickstand, which I think kind of sucks. Plus one for both teams. Both devices do sleep when close, and both devices do wake up when opened. Each team gets a point. Next section, the keyboard. Keys on the bridge have better action. The keys on the Magic Keyboard have a more modern shape providing more surface area. If I were forced to choose, I'd pick the Magic Keyboard typing experience. I'll give it a tie, no one gets points. With the bridge, you get every key on the Magic Keyboard, plus many more, primarily because of this top row of function buttons. Let's go over what we have. You get a dedicated Siri button, you have a home button, you have a lock screen, you have a keyboard brightness toggle, you have two buttons for screen brightness, down and up, you can just hold it. 
you have a dedicated button to pull up the soft keyboard and dismiss it. You have the globe key, which will toggle the kind of keyboard you're using. Mainly it's just for pulling up emojis. You have your media controls, your track back, your play and pause, your track forward, and you have your volume down and your volume up. And you can just hold them and they'll go up. Down and up. You also have a dedicated Bluetooth button. This is not for pulling up all of your Bluetooth devices. This is only for pairing the keyboard to the iPad and you have a power button. These last two, the Magic Keyboard do not need. So I'm not counting them as cool. So this is pretty good. 10 single button shortcuts that provide quick access to functionality you don't have on Apple's keyboard. Gonna give the bridge two points. Okay, I've stalled long enough. Finally, the trackpad. The bridge trackpad is only clickable on the bottom. So, uh, boo. Well, that's a boo. With the Magic Keyboard, you can click wherever you gosh darn well please. One consequence of not being able to click anywhere is that it makes text selection and dragging objects more cumbersome. Plus one for the spaceship owner. The Bridges trackpad does not track nearly as well as the Magic Keyboards. You really see this with micro movements moving from one letter to another or one adjacent line to another. When I reviewed the Magic Keyboard, I called out its responsiveness. I kind of thought to myself, well, aren't all trackpads pretty good? It's such a mature technology. Well, not really on the iPad. See, the Magic Keyboard's trackpad blows the Bridges trackpad out of the water here. Since the trackpad and the ability to easily move the cursor around is a big selling point for both of these keyboards, I'm giving Hair Force One's hanger two points. The difference in scrolling behavior is even more pronounced. I've collected some horrific footage. Viewer beware. See what's going on is the bridge's scrolling is jagged and it's not benefiting from a ramp up and ramp down speed dynamic that we are seeing on the Magic Keyboard. When scrolling with the bridge, expect the scroll to stop when you stop and expect jumpy inconsistent behavior when paging, like through the home screens. Newton's inspiration plus two. Three finger gestures are flat out not supported on the bridge, so yikes. To jog your memory, it means you can't do the home gesture, the app toggling gesture, or the app expose reveal. No app expose is particularly bad as there is no way to get it from the keyboard either. There's no dedicated key or shortcut. Maybe it'll come later. You can only get there by interacting with the iPad directly. So remember when I said that the home bar is hard to get to? Well, a three finger gesture is like grabbing the home bar. So you are completely blocked on the gesture side and physically hindered when interacting with the iPad. App toggling is really awkward without a three finger gesture. It's easier just to touch the screen. You know, if the home bar is actually accessible. There is a bit of good news. You can assign a function to a three finger tap. See how to do this in this timestamp. As you can see, I did assign app expose to the three finger tap as there really is no other good way to get there. Anyway, three finger gestures are a core part of Apple's iPad trackpad strategy. So plus two for fruit that stays good for a long time. Do apples even go bad? Finally, no pinch to zoom on the bridge. Maybe I haven't tried long enough. Maybe I gotta really want it. Harry Potter's favorite keyboard, plus one. So the final score is 19 to nine. I'll justify the plus two X defeat by saying the Bridge Pro Plus with its totally terrible magnetic keyboard, its uninspired mimicking of a laptop and poor trackpad quality really degrades the overall iPad experience. I mean, the iPad Pro is an extremely slick device. Don't f it up. The Magic Keyboard is not perfect, but quite frankly, feels almost perfect compared to the bridge. I'm not really that normal. I bought the bridge largely to review it and to provide a trackpad case for my 2018 iPad, which is largely a backup vanity device. I don't need it. If I bought the bridge for my primary device and then got to play with the Magic Keyboard, I would be really, really, really regretful. Both keyboards are rather expensive. The Magic Keyboard, I hate to say it, kind of lives up to the price. If the iPad is your primary device, or you are planning on making it your primary device, I'd say make the Magic Keyboard investment. It'll save you some frustration for sure, and will increase the productivity value of your iPad. If you're buying a bridge or already have one, 
Just hope that Apple makes it easier for third parties to mimic the Apple trackpad experience and that Bridge is able to improve over time with firmware. As far as I'm aware, the Bridge is the only competition to the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro in terms of having a trackpad. I don't want to beat up on Bridge too much. I expect a lot of the limitations we see here will be present on other third-party keyboards. You know, as Apple certainly keeps some of the iPad's hardware and software special sauce all for itself. All right, that wraps up my review. Good job, buddies. If you're still there, you probably found this video redeeming on some level. I hope I earned a like, comment, or sub. Maybe, maybe not. Keep watching if you want instructions on how to pair the keyboard to the iPad, um, how to update its firmware, and or assign the three finger tap that I showed you earlier. Gonna wrap it up, catch you on the next one. Trying to do a Peter McKinnon thing here. Didn't work. <laughs>